Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So according to Microsoft, as of the 14th of October next year, 2025, they will be ending support for Windows 10. And although Microsoft has said that, I still personally feel that they won't end support officially next year. But nonetheless, it goes without saying that if this does happen, it doesn't mean that your suddenly your Windows 10 device will just suddenly stop working. Obviously, you will be able to use the device after end of support. So if you do decide to carry on using your Windows 10 device, like I know a lot of users will, then just a kind of quick video to give you a couple of tips just to show you what you can do in case you're unaware to try and keep um, your Windows 10 experience to some degree or other safe and secure after the end of support. Now, I must just say at the outset that I don't recommend using an unsupported OS or browser or any app or anything like that. But obviously this is common practice. We look at Windows XP, which is still being used today, Windows 7 and so on. So just a couple of things to bear in mind if you would be interested. Now, even after Windows 10 support ends next year, um, third-party software developers and hardware manufacturers will most probably continue to release updates for those products of theirs. So it goes without saying that regularly updating your software and drivers is very important because um, Windows itself will not be getting updates or any security or quality updates. So as we always say on the channel, make sure your web browsers are up to date. And obviously this will uh, take a bit of manually checking, but nonetheless, um, it's a worthwhile process at the end of the day. So check your web browsers are up to date. Your antivirus software is up to date in any other apps you use on a regular basis or up to date. And for device drivers, you can also check the manufacturer's website um, for updates or use tools, um, third-party tools um, to look for new driver versions. And I think our bit booster is one of those which could be quite useful um, if you want to carry on using Windows 10 and keep your drivers up to date. Then it also goes without saying that you need to use good third-party antivirus software because Windows Defender and the Windows Security app will no longer be getting updates because Windows 10 will not be supported. So this will increase the risk of vulnerabilities to some degree. And, to, and as we go further past the October end of support date, obviously this risk will increase. So what you need to do is you would need to then get your hands on third-party reliable um, antivirus software. And just to mention two for the purpose of this video, Kaspersky and Bitdefender, I think would get the job done. Um, if you want to continue using Windows 10, make sure you get a reputable third-party antivirus. Now, Windows 10 also comes with a built-in firewall, um, which will continue to function. But I would suggest that you um, go for a more advanced third-party firewall um, because obviously um, this is quite limited in its basic function, if you think of it at, at the end of the day. And a good third-party firewall can block unauthorized access to your system and also monitor incoming and outgoing network traffic for any suspicious activity. So get a good um, firewall over and above the built-in Windows 10 firewall. And then this is something very close to my heart, so to speak. You need to back up regularly because without security updates, it means your system becomes more vulnerable to attack. And that could result in data loss because obviously if you get a Trojan or a bad virus, it could wreck your system. And then if you haven't got a backup, then all that data is lost. So both local and cloud backups um, are good ideas, but obviously whatever works for you, but just make sure you do regular backups. Now, if you like to experiment and you like to maybe experiment with new software or download files from um, maybe untrusted sources, then you need to use virtualization. And I wouldn't do that in the actual OS itself. Um, I would use VirtualBox or VMware, which will create isolated virtual environments where you can test like dangerous actions, potentially dangerous software actions and so on and without risking your main operating system. As I mentioned in the beginning, and make sure your browser is up to date, but I would recommend um, switching to a secure browser because web browsers, as I mentioned on the channel, are your first line of defense 
to some degree or the other when it comes to threat and attack. So with Windows 10 no longer obviously receiving security updates, this even becomes more important. So using a, a secure browser becomes a lot more essential. So obviously you can use Google Chrome. I think any of the browsers we feature on this channel will get the job done. And uh, um, that's quite an important one. And obviously make sure that browser is up to date. Now if you are not using certain apps and software, I would recommend if you've got a whole long list of apps and you find yourself not using those apps on a regular basis, then what I would do is I would uninstall any app I'm not using. Because obviously the more software you've got on your PC, the more entry point you've got into your device, so to speak. So I would disable any features and um, apps or, and uninstall any apps I wouldn't use or, or, or I'm not using. So as an example, if you're not using remote desktop, then turn it off to prevent any unauthorized access through remote desktop, just as a simple example for the purpose of this video. And then I think pilot error would be a big one when it comes to opening up your device to threat and attacks. So you need to kind of be aware of things like phishing emails which might increase as Windows 10 becomes more vulnerable. So always verify the source before just clicking on links and downloading attachments in your email. I would just keep a bit of a more sharper R. And obviously, don't visit dodgy websites and, you know, um, and just practice good computing habits. I think that's a big one if you want to keep using Windows 10 after end of support. And then according to Microsoft, um, you can also pay for continued support and I have posted a video on this and I'll leave that link down below and in the end screen where Microsoft will offer paid support um, after the um, 14th of October next year which will be through the Windows 10 Extended Security Updates ESU program so I'll leave that video um, as mentioned for you to go check out I'm not going to get into that too much because that's a whole video on its own and then if you don't want to upgrade to Windows 11 which I know a lot of users don't want to, then you can switch to Linux. And I mean, I dual boot this Windows 10 device with Linux Mint. So a couple of Linux distros you can use, which are very similar to the layout and look and feel of Windows 10 would be um, Linux Mint, Zorin OS and Linux Lite. Just to mention three examples, but those I think would give you a very similar feel to how um, Windows 10 currently looks feels and the layout so go check those out because obviously um, they will run on basically any Windows 10 device they are not high maintenance as well so there's just a couple of things guys and um, I hope you found it useful Um obviously if there's something I haven't touched on in this video maybe um, I've just missed something that you actually think would be a good point let me know in the comments and that would be um, quite great because I always appreciate good um, constructive comments uh, down below. So that's just how you can keep using Windows 10 running safely to some degree or the other, although I don't recommend it, after the end of support, which according to Microsoft will be next year on the 14th of October 2025. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.